Hey everyone, I'm Curtin Davina, and joining me today is Will Poulter. He is going to be in the next Dark Pictures Anthology, Little Hope. So Will, thank you so much for being here. No, not at all, man. Thanks for having me. So this isn't your first rodeo with games, or at least uh, you've been in Bandersnatch prior to that. Um, and now this. And I'm curious, personally, about the overlap there, or if there is any uh, and major differences between being in a Choose your own adventure Netflix movie game, and then something like what Supermassive Games is known for. Sure, yeah. Um, I think the crossover, at least from a creative standpoint, um, if I sort of hold the two projects up side by side, is is that they're both inherently cinematic. And although um, they kind of follow the the structure of uh, a game, and, and obviously um, it's uh, largely kind of gamer or active viewer led. Um, you know, the, the, the game Little Hope, like a lot of the games across the Dark Pictures anthology, are very filmic. Um, there's a real emphasis on authentic performances and, and on a, a really kind of intriguing film-like narrative. And uh, that was cool. Um, I think, honestly, I found sort of entertaining all the different kind of potential choices when it came to shooting Bandersnatch really, really difficult. And that was because we shot sort of out of continuity. Um, whereas with Little Hope, although we had to, you know, entertain lots of different choices, um, lucky that, you know, we were kind of able to pretty much shoot in, in sequence. So made it that tad bit easier. Did you, have you done motion capture before? It was my first time doing like an entirely motion capture based performance. I've done sort of small elements of motion capture, but nothing sure. like this. What was the uh, like the the main transition? I mean, of course, the obvious in which you're in a spandex suit and you have nothing to work with. But uh, right, right. like you had just mentioned with, with Bandersnatch and certain continuity issues and shooting out of order. And also you have to worry about the elements of what it's like to shoot on a set. What is that like for you as an actor to work only in motion capture? Were there any advantages, stuff like that? Yeah, you know, I found it, it was a really fun exercise and imagination. You know, I actually really enjoyed the fact that without set or without props, you know, you were kind of left to create a lot of it in your mind. And, and there's something, um, you know, strangely sort of freeing about that. It would seem like it was sort of a limitation, but it, but it, but it wasn't. Um, and, and I really enjoyed it. The thing that I had to sort of get used to was the pace. I mean, the pace that we moved at was pretty, was pretty intense. Um, that was something that I wasn't, I wasn't used to. I thought TV pace was, was uh, heavy, but um, game, game making pace is, uh, is like sprint work. Right. And especially like, you know, the, the, the cliche, like, I mean, having movie sets you have, it's, it's every single time you do something, you have to take a break, you have to reset up, you have to redo things. And in this case, uh, you can just pick up from where you left off, which must've been a grueling exercise, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely. One thing that I, I find fascinating is you've done Midsummer. You've done Banner Snatch, and now, you know, Little Hope is on its way, and there's like this theme of horror uh, kind of trickling mm -hmm. in some of your recent performances. Um, what is it, having done those things on camera, what was the process like for having to evoke horror uh, or mm -hmm. the reaction of horror when you're in motion capture, when you have nothing to work with? Right, right. I think you find yourself really um, leaning on your castmates a, a lot, you know, in order to sort of make it feel authentic and, and, and really kind of, um, you know, conjure up that that horror. I mean, you know, in, in every aspect of the performance, the, the script and indeed our director, Nick, Nick Bowen, you know, encouraged us to go for authenticity. You know, he was a stickler for that. And if anything seemed unnaturalistic or um, sort of too theatrical, he'd reel us right back, which is which is great in that sense. It was you know every bit like a like a film. Um, but then when it came to you know the horror and and I think our reactions to the horrifying things, he really wanted us to go for it and not hold back. And I think the reason being is that these games, like pretty much all of the games in the anthology, they are focused on ordinary people put under unimaginable you know stress and in terrifying circumstances so stands to reason that our reactions would be what they are um and that was that was really cool you know that was that was really nice to know that you could just kind of trust your instincts and react to things naturally and you'd be serving the project to the best of your ability i feel like it's got to be 
as you mentioned, like a testament of the people you work with and the, and the ability to evoke this imagination, this, the, these things that you mm-hmm. cannot see. Um, on a more on a more game-ish side, you, and I, and I apologize for keep going back to like Midsummer and Bandersnatch, but there's no, this, no. This, 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 these, these, these things that I find super fascinating that are like aligning in this place. So you, you played, albeit a, uh, this kind of acclaimed game maker uh, in mm-hmm. one thing, in Bandersnatch. Is there anything you grew uh, out of appreciation from that role now having, and of course it's from, you know, portraying a character from a different time period, but um, is there anything you internalized or anything you were able to appreciate now working on a game internally yeah. opposed to portraying a person who's making games? Yeah, it's it's interesting, you know, it wasn't until very, very recently that I sort of formed that link or someone pointed it out to me that, you know, you played a games developer and now, you know, you've, you've been a character in a game and I sort of thought, and, you know, the project that you played a games developer in was also, you know, multi-strand narrative, choose your own adventures. Like, and that kind of, I had a sort of little bit of a mind-blowing moment. Um, I feel like the folks behind Black Mirror may still be watching me, to be honest, but um, I, I think it did certainly help me appreciate just how far you know games have come in terms of their development and you know um the advent of, of technology in the gaming world um I, I i know from some of my research in preparation for bandersnatch how you know fairly basic sort of games you know made on the spectrum were blowing people's minds across you know bedrooms around the country when they when they first sort of came out and then uh you know people went from playing those in their bedrooms on relatively rudimentary kind of simple consoles to now having these incredibly immersive sort of film epic experiences like like the one you know um that's offered in, in the shape of little hope so it, it definitely i think helped me grow my appreciation for just how far it's come what's it uh and, and kind of with that aspect and like that that in the back of your mind what is the what is it like for knowing that players, that people are have a stake in what happens to you as a character uh, in a way that you otherwise can't grasp? You know, there's vicarious, otherwise audience members are vicariously watching things happen to you. But in this case, it's yeah. kind of, it's quite literally in their hands uh, on what happens right. to you. Is there any, is, is there, was there any sort of thought, I mean, like, how did that feel? Was that something that crossed your mind or the very idea of watching or even controlling yourself in that scenario? Yeah, definitely. I think it adds to the sense of suspense, um, you know, the the threat as well, and really the the kind of shock and horror of it when it could potentially goes wrong and a choice that you make leads you down a pathway towards, you know, doom or something like it. Um, and that and that's that's also a really intriguing thing that comes with, you know, I think interactive mediums and, and, and the world of, of, of gaming. It's intriguing to think about how we can utilize that to I think make the um, experience of accessing whatever the message is more sort of palpable, you know, um, the more immersive experience, I think the greater the opportunity for, for empathy and, and for, you know, the understanding of other experiences that are different to your own. So it's um it's exciting to think how that technology is going to be used and, and the role that games you know will, will play in that are you uh, are you bummed out at all when you see but either when you're making a choice as a as a player or you have to witness what somebody does that has an impact on your character in any way you know what that's what i think gaming has over traditional film and television is that when you watch a horror film and you're screaming at the characters to make better choices you don't go through that door the nice thing is as a gamer you know you have that you have that choice you're responsible for for you know whatever branch you want to explore in your narrative and uh it puts the power in the hands of the the person who has the controller right and especially with super massive games specifically there's so many branching ways and so many different things you can do and characters are introduced their characters that are introduced fairly early on can die <laughs> quite quickly after depending on you play yeah. um and of course, like, you know, we have the the privilege of being able to like play the game multiple times and see how scenarios work out. Uh, mm-hmm. But is there is there does the idea in any way like kind of bum you out that you might <laughs> die early on in the story and then people won't get to see kind of like uh, the branch or work you've done going forward in the game and the, in the story of the game? 
Yeah, I mean, in the interest of authenticity, it's important to point out that like every character can die, but you know, um, by the same token, like every character can can survive as well. So um, the nice thing, obviously, is that you can go back and, and try again. And um, I do know what you mean. I mean, uh, you know, sometimes when you hear about you know different people's experiences, you think, ah, oh, shoot, you know, I wish you'd made this choice. I wish you made that. But it's kind of the beauty of it that people can have a, you know a range of different experiences. Right. And the thing that's especially cool about Little Hope for me is there's this mysterious quality um you know throughout the whole throughout the whole game that kind of lives in the the fog that uh, sort of defines little hope and you're constantly trying to work out you know what's going on there are constant unnerving reminders that not all is what it seems and i think one of the tasks that people will really enjoy is trying to work out how the different time periods and how the various characters all link towards you know or sorry all link to each other is there any certain uh, difference in preparation for a role like this? Uh, you mentioned earlier you did a lot of research for Bandersnatch and kind of looking at that era and games and how that worked. Um, and in this case, you're playing a college student on a field trip. Um, but beyond like the, 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 the character, the things that define the character you're playing, um, mm. what is just the general preparation difference between working on film and working in a video game? It's interesting. Um, so I'm, I'm responsible for um, three characters in the film. Uh, sorry, in the game. That's how filmic it is. In the game. Uh, Andrew, it is called pictures, who, after all. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, Andrew, who um, exists in the present day and is, is the student, as you mentioned. Um, Anthony, um, who uh, exists in the 1970s. And then a character called Abraham, who exists in 1692. And um, I think that really i wouldn't say that there are any major differences i think in order to distinguish between the three characters i had to come up with sort of characterization or sort of characteristics for each of them so that they could be set apart um right. anthony is a little bit sort of more immature and slightly younger um uh, abraham obviously existing in a totally different time period had a totally different way of conversing and indeed a different accent um with a sort of greater disparity to his accent between what Andrew and Anthony's was. So little things like that, that you have to take into consideration, you know, um, any with any role you play, but because there were three of them, it was more about making them distinct from each other. The uh -huh. the, the thing that's unique to, to, to the gaming experience or, the, or rather the experience of, of, of making the game was when those characters interacted with each other. And then you have to consider, okay, what would, this character, how would he present himself to that character? So sometimes I play, well, there was one scene where I played um, Abraham talking to Andrew and Andrew talking to Abraham. And that was that was a bit of a brain scramble. When you're not filming, when you're not making a game or any of that thing, what are you playing? What do you do on your off time? <laughs> any games that you uh, play on your off time? Yeah, um, you know what? I'm honestly, I'm not a huge gamer um, and kind uh. of never was. Um, but I was that kid who used to watch other people game. I used to be that person who, you know, would happily pass the pad and, and, and watch people play. Um, and I think I enjoyed it from a, a narrative perspective more than more than anything else. And also I just wasn't very good uh, at gaming. I was always the guy to like lose a life or, you know, get, get, choose the wrong option. So um, I was a happy spectator. And that's, uh, I mean, that's really quite amazing given the, uh, the games that you chose to, you know, that, that you you somehow found yourself into uh, was an interactive, yeah. narrative-driven game, which is amazing. So, yeah. are you? I mean, it's it's it. Uh, is that something you're going to try? Are you going to try and play? Are you at least going to see uh, what it's like to to get through Little Hope, or are you going to pass it to someone and, and watch over the shoulders and judge their every movements with your characters? No. A hundred percent. I mean, it'd be a good test of sort of like friendship loyalty or family loyalty, wouldn't it? If I just kind of like watched, watched my friends and family play and see if they would like, you know, strive to keep me alive or not. But um, uh, no, I, I am, I am wanting to play it desperately. I've seen a lot of the gameplay, and the game looks absolutely incredible. So I'm, I'm desperate to to give it a go, and and uh, it's out in the fall, and, and can't wait to, can't wait to do that. Uh, in any case, if there's anything more that you want to add or say in terms of Little Hope and what we can expect, I know you mentioned out in the fall, but anything else you want to add, Will? No, no, just thanks very much for having me, Kurt, and I uh, hope people uh, enjoy the game. 
Absolutely. Cool. Well, thanks everyone. I was Karen Davina and this is Will Poulter. For everything Little Hope and Dark Pictures Anthology, keep it here at GameSpot. Mm -hmm.